Hey guys, just a quick little note before we get into the podcast. We had a great conversation. It was a good time. Uh, the audio and video cut out midway, so we only have uh, the audio from the iPhone, but that's okay because we have a ton of information about one off and the brand. So enjoy. Yeah. On your broad, also be the mission. Be the best shot of warm, but there will be no submission. Teacher gave assignment, gave my dick, that's the submission. Alright. <laughs> Overflowed over there. Well, that's how we're gonna get into today. Is it today's rolling? episode. It's rolling? Yeah, it's rolling right now. Oh, fuck. I just spilled beer all over myself, but uh, hey, let's not waste any time. Let's get into business. Cheers, fun. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, give you a fucking, oh, oh yeah, fucking bike hey. acrobatics here. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for having me on, man. Mm. Thanks for coming on. Alrighty, guys. This is the second episode. Historical moment. We're here today with William Lazary. William Lazary, great guy. I've known him for probably six, seven years. Yeah. We yeah, haven't been I very. Think. Yeah. We we've kind like of seen each years. other from the sidelines, eh? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, from time to time, i uh, our crews would sort of cross paths and shit, and we just yeah. hang out. Shine's like one of the funniest kids I know straight up. Like, you're fucking hilarious, bro. So, uh, Thank definitely, you, bro. definitely didn't forget you for a second, don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I first heard of you from your uh, your trap music that you're making oh, there. Oh, shit. Yeah, Ill Will. Let's talk it's about been, Ill Will. It's been a fucking while. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, basically used to, uh, used to, used to, 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 on this very mic, actually, funny enough. I we got to, the mic, it's a historical mic right yeah, over here. It's, we got it's, it. it's, a, it's a piece of art history right here. I used to come home from the club after uh, quite a few drinks. It'd be like three in the morning <laughs> with uh, my buddy Victor, aka Ralph. Well, Ralph! Yeah, I, I collabed with him, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 you did a song with him. That's yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. We and, were both uh, in the trap game back in the day. Yeah. When we were lit off to the club, we would just fuck around and make the biggest bangers, like by far. It's true. Yeah. Like, in Seja, my, my rap career was just absolutely stellar. It was so much fun, man. Bro, I remember listening to some of them, and like I have, I'd like them on my SoundCloud, and I'd wow. be like, it'd be in my playlist, you know what I mean? That's and big, I'm like, these guys got it. Lil Pump, bro, let's be honest. Lil Pump was fire. He was loud. He's a banger, but you know, the content Lil, wasn't Lil, there. Lil Pump at first was actually like super fire. So I remember 2017. When he, when he was coming up, I actually I went to see him in Montreal the, at like this venue on Park. I think it was called Fairmount or something like that. And there it was, was like, a tiny place, right? It was, there, was, there was only like 200 people there. Okay. That was the craziest part. Like there was only 200 people there. I was standing there front row and Killy opened up for Lil Pump and Killy was tiny at the time, bro. He had Kilimanjaro, which had popped off. Well, how many listeners? Is he a big guy, Killy? I don't know who he is. Killy, Killy's pretty big rapper. Like he was a very big rapper in like 2018 when okay. he dropped like uh, uh, Surrender Your Soul. Like that was his debut album. And then after that, he kind of fell off, like most rappers, but he was really, really big at the time. Short. Uh, and Lil Pump was like really coming up. Sorry? It's a short lifespan. Yeah. Uh, well, the, yeah. Nowadays with Trap, it's like, it's, it's super short. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not really so much what I listen to now anymore anyways, but uh, it was just a crazy, crazy era for music. Like, I remember going to concerts and the energy was fucking insane. Like, even Playboy Cardi, like, when he went to his debut album concert or when he was on tour with ASAP Ferg, like... Mm. That was like one of the craziest concerts I've ever been to. Like just being in that mosh pit, like you literally felt ignited. It's it true, fun. and it was such an easy thing to get into. Like anybody could, your fucking grandma could make a trap song. Like anybody was, could make it. And that's what made it so intoxicating. Yeah. It was just so much fucking fun. Like it was just super organic. Um, so that was a really, really fun period. Yeah, and you were making like loud, like basically his music, we're going to play a little bit of it for you guys on the show. <laughs> oh my God, man, it's been a bit. It, it, it will play it in the background, but what's going to, or we'll, Chop this part and we'll play the song. Um, it was loud. It's like, you hear it for yourself. You know, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. You but... yell at everybody, you know? <laughs> at first I thought you were just like, was some, the some shit, angry yeah. kid. I was yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's the funnest guy to hang out. He's like, ew, we're on the track. Uh, like, that was my first track. I was just, that was... Uh... That first shot, puberty, I, right? It was yeah, yeah, yeah. Testosterone. I was, I was just fucking it up, man. I wasn't serious. Like the yelling was all for yeah, shit. You yeah, know? Yeah, I had yeah. my boys in the background while I was recording it. It was so funny. But uh, you grew as an artist. I could uh, for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. For the short period I was making music, none of it was serious though. I never really had any real intention. I did like a concert at one point, which was yeah. cool. 
uh, had like forty people come out to that. We sold like tickets and stuff. Oh, good for you! Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. I like walked up on stage. I was wearing a full winter coat with nothing underneath, <laughs> and uh, and we all just kind of bounced. Fucking almost broke the floors. It was just really really a lot of fun. Jesus Christ! Was, you guys were all angry, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah we well, on the track. <laughs> so, like, so that was like the peak of my music career, you know. I guess yeah. you could say, but uh, yeah, a fun, a fun period. You mentioned you're doing a, um, you had a concert there, and you're selling tickets and stuff. Um, yeah, because I, I used to be in a band. We're not going to talk too much about that. I kind of did similar activities. Yeah, you like were rock music and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, you were, you were. But that always. So you were always drawn drawn to like the business aspect of like entertainment, right? I mean, I guess the business is certainly a part of it. Um, like I'm always interested in business in general. You know, mm. went to like business school, so I guess like there's always that aspect. But, but you're not like a uh, like a regular business school kind of guy. You meet, you know, you're a little you're. No. I don't want to say eccentric, but you know, you're kind of out there a little bit. You know, I guess I am. Uh, I'm definitely not like all of like the business school jackasses you'll meet at McGill, like you know that that I had to do group projects with and like fucking almost blow my brains up. But, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, very uh, very interesting experience being around those kinds of people. Mm. I have to say, there's there were some beauties at McGill too. There were some people who were you know super super on the edge, like super different, super on the outside, a lot more eccentric. So it was cool meeting people like that too. So yeah. But what I'm driving into that, so you, you got the foundation there. You had the business tools that you needed, the school, the knowledge. But you decided you wanted, to, you didn't want to take the traditional route, going to work for like Golden Sachs or something like that. You wanted to no. start your own thing and be an entrepreneur. Yes. Well, so interestingly enough, um, one of my best friends, Will Rossi, who's like now on his own eccentric path, which is fucking amazing to see. Shout out Sprout. Him and I both. Yeah. Shout out to Sprout. Go fucking check that out. It's really cool. Um, him and I both got job offers at National Bank like four years ago for a summer internship in wealth management. And uh, he took the offer and he took it like knowing he wouldn't enjoy the job, but he needed to do it. Um, and I initially was going to take the offer. But then when I walked back in the office, uh, I just realized like it's really not where I wanted to be. And it wasn't, it wasn't about the money, you know, like, yeah, the money would have been nice, but it's just like I would have been miserable that whole summer and I decided, fuck it, this is not what I'm gonna do. Um, and after I made that decision, I just realized like it was gonna be a little bit more of a beating my own path type of mm -hmm. thing and uh, figuring out my own route. So yeah, I mean, now I'm off doing my, my own ventures, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, off. Uh, Yeah, exactly. So, you know, working on, uh, working on a clothing brand and having a clothing brand is something I've wanted to do since I'm like probably like 12 years old. Mm. Um, but I was just kind of waiting for the right idea to come along to, to put it all into action because only a clothing brand is not, not a simple thing. I can tell you that like there's, you scroll on Instagram nowadays, there's 50 million fucking clothing brands that are all selling the same t-shirt with the graphic, with the screen print. It's not, it's not like when Virgil started where the fact that he screen printed on a t-shirt was practically revolutionary, you know, mm. now it's, uh, the barrier to entry is, uh, is uh, is certainly low, but it's challenging. There's a lot of there's a lot of noise and a lot of attention to compete for. So, so to stand out is hard. I mean, you saw what we did. We 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 told you to come along for the election drop. We did and yeah. do the voiceover. You know, we're, we're we're trying to do some pretty outside of the box shit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah the one with the Trump. I was like, I just got off the phone with the folks there at One Off. And I just want to say that this new merch shop is going to be tremendous. You know, you've got to do one off. One off is great. It's the best brand ever. Yeah, yeah we fucking like Trump impression. <laughs> super jokes, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, that was a, that was a good marketing campaign you guys had there. Because one off, just for the viewers now, like it's basically you guys you capitalize on a moment in history and you market the shit out of it. You you make it entertaining to be in. It's almost like a meme. But it's not a meme, it's like a, a cultural significance, you know what I mean? So yeah. It's almost history on a shirt, that's basically the way it is. Well, yeah, it's like, uh, it's, taking, it's taking pop culture and, uh, and incorporating it into the products that we make, you know? So like this, like that I'm wearing right now, this is like the most recent thing we did, it was all about day trading, right? So like, mm. every fucking finance bro on Wall Street is wearing uh, a Patagonia fleece, you know? So we said, okay, let's just rework the Patagonia fleece but adapted for the modern day day trader 
aka like the kid who sits in his basement and trades fucking NFTs or crypto or whatever. So uh, we changed like the logo to be like a mountain, like a stock chart. Mm. And there's these two patches and I don't have them with me right now, but it comes with leather patches and a marker so you can write whatever the fuck you want. Say what you're trading at that moment because people are so vocal about it. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> On the inside, there's like a vape pocket. So if you vape, you can oh, wow. put your vape there. Um, and there's a lot of other gimmicks, like there's a comic on the inside too, but like it's, it's all about like incorporating that into the product and then the marketing collateral, like we went to New York uh, to the actual charging bull statue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Made, made a fleece the size of the fucking bull, which was the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, I have to give it up. It's my partner, Halal. He's mm. a marketing genius. His ideas are fucking insane. He's the hype man there. He's, he's, he's Hype killer. Halal. We're going to call him Hype Halal, everybody. Hype Halal. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely hyper, I'll tell you that. But yeah, he's yeah. a fucking smart kid. Super, I, super clever ideas and executing on them is honestly a pleasure. So. Yo, when you did that, like, were, did, was there security? Was there cops? How did you Holy guys fun, like man. get through the gate or whatever? I don't know how it works. Tell us a little bit about that. So it all started in September when we were planning out this drop. And Hillel looked at me and he's like, okay, I have this idea. I have a crazy idea. And he's, I'm like, what the fuck's the idea? He's like, yeah, we're going to put a fleece on the bull. And I'm like, holy shit, okay. So I started looking into 3D models of the bull and figuring out measurements. I contact the pattern maker. I took an entire roll of fucking sample fabric, build it, then I have a girl make me a woven label that was like literally a meter long. Like it was ridiculous. And uh, and then we're like, okay, well, now we need a long. That's fucking, it was crazy. It was that's crazy. That's insane. This is, this is the woven label here, and it's three centimeters Holy long. Holy like, shit. It's, it's, it's insane. So, uh, we'll put up a picture for that. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. So, so we're like, okay, well, now next step, we need to go to New York. And we said, well, we could go to New York on our own, but that'd be a little bit boring. So we started inviting people. And coming off of our LA trip, where we had done like a crazy trip with a bunch of people, Everyone was very hyped about what we were doing. So when we started inviting people for New York, everyone said yes. And we ended up becoming like a squad of like 20 people going to New York. So on like the Saturday night we were there, uh, three in the morning, we took the fleece, went over to the charging bull. And there was like 20 of us outside there just putting oh, the shit. fleece on the bull, taking pictures and videos. And uh, we did it at night. There was no security. We tried to do it the next day also to get like a picture in the daytime. But it was impossible. We went at like six forty-five in the morning. There was security. There was it was insane. Like it was very difficult to pull off. So, uh, oh, you still got the picture though. That's what we got the picture. Yeah, we got the picture. We got the night, picture. Yeah, that's it. and it looks more like it's like a nightclub uh, boy. You know, it's like out there at night. You know, it's got a sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, a bro. nightclub. Bro. It's a nightclub boy, bro. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. fuck around. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. high on acid. Fucking it doesn't <laughs> it's go fuck. some shit. Yeah, <laughs> on Valium. Um, <laughs> It's in New York too, you know? New York's a crazy place. What the fuck does Valium do again? I don't know, bro. I, it's it's, it's funny though. It's a funny like it's sounding word. dick or something? Or it's, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's another one of those pills, eh? Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to fuck this chick. Yeah, I'm like 65 years old, so you know, I got to get a Valium. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's... Okay, so you did that shit with the fucking bull. That's... A lot of people... You know what I'll say about you and Hillel, like, that I see out of people? You guys have big balls, you know? Like, fucking Tony Montana says, All I have for this world is my balls and my word. And I don't give that for no one, you understand? All I have in this world is my balls and my word. And I don't break them for no one. Do you understand? You guys kind of... Um, <laughs> you're the epitome of that quote, you know? You guys don't give a fuck. You just... You're like... Let's go to New York. Let's go to LA. You know, let's just do it. I mean, when you guys do that, that process, do you guys plan a lot? Like, we're gonna meet this guy. We're gonna meet that guy. Or are you, are you guys more like, let's fucking go. Let's let's see how it goes. You know. Well, uh, I believe like is, there's minimal plotting. Like, I I believe if you go with the right group of people and you bring the right energy to a certain place, like magical shit's gonna happen to you. You know, like LA was the definition of that. So. Um, no man, there's not much plotting. We just we just get a very energetic, very fucked up group of people who just all want to get up to some demon shit and just like seriously have <laughs> demon a shit up. like fucking. You guys are satanic or like Travis Scott? What what what's demon shit? Tell the viewers. Um, it depends the instance, bro. Like, I don't know in LA, like we <laughs> in LA at like fucking two in the morning, we pulled up to Travis Scott's house because hello is like. He's a crackhead. Like he just went, found out where he lived. Like dick full oh, shit. Like, whatever. 
So we pull up to his house just to scope out the situation. And that was when we had just dropped our spring break hat and we were trying to give a hat to Travis. Um, so we scoped out his house, whatever. And then we went back a few days later in the middle of the day. And I had it in a bag with a note. And I went up to his like front entrance. I saw the brown Lamborghini parked behind like the fucking gates. I tried chucking the bag over a security guard comes out. He's like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Da, 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 da. And I start bullshitting him on the spot. I have a whole video of this actually, but I start bullshitting him on the spot. And I'm like, oh yeah, no, listen, I saw my dating girl last night. It's a club in LA. Cause he had performed there. And we tried to sneak into that shit too. That wow. We tried to go in from the back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw my dating girl. Uh, uh, he told me, yeah, come by, give me the hat, all this stuff. He's like, this is not Travis' house, this is not Travis' house. I'm like, well, listen, this, this is the address I was given. And he's like, okay, all right. Oh, Took wow. The bag, brought it in. <laughs> so Travis, I believe, has seen his first one-off piece. It's going to take maybe six or seven more of those interactions to uh, to uh, get him to really know what it is. But yeah. when, and you, you better hope next time there's a different guard there. <laughs> <laughs> who's just as dumb though <laughs> yeah I mean listen bro uh, no, you, no, probably it's your charisma that's what saved you and you're probably so confident in that situation right like you were you were scared you I have to you know, have right? to you have to be confident like for sure I was like what the fuck's going on but like I also try to put myself in as many of those what the fuck's going on situations as possible mm. like where I just really don't know what the hell I'm dealing with like mm. that's I feel like that's how you grow as a person so yeah, for sure. You've had a lot of those. And I mean, uh, I saw you like the first moment where I saw like, you know, you guys were like getting big and, um, you know, it was like, holy fuck, these guys are like reaching uh, a new level, you know, um, it was when the Nelk Boys, when you guys were in the oh, Nelk yeah. Boys video and Halal yeah, yeah, went yeah. on uh, Instagram and he posted all that stuff. So bro, Halal's, what the hell was that? Like, fucking yeah, bro. it's crazy, bro. What Basically, so back to the shit where Halal could just find Travis's address. Halal found Kyle Forjard's number. Like, how the hell did he do that? Help. He has his tactics. Is he a Russian hacker? <laughs> Halal, are you? If you're watching this, are you a Russian hacker? He's, he's and if crazy. so, uh, can crazy. I uh, he has, he has have some, some services here? He's, he's, he's <laughs> trying pretty, to hack into somebody's account. He has some pretty sneaky tactics, but uh, <laughs> he basically it was like disclosed somewhere on social media that he was coming to Montreal. Yes. So Halal caught gauge of that and he just texted him as he does to many celebrities who never answer, just a shot in the dark. And he's mm. like, hey, I'm one of the biggest DJs in Montreal and uh, you know, I'm, uh, I, I want to host you. Uh, I can DJ at one of the biggest clubs. Da, da, da. I want to do a party with you tonight. And Kyle answered. He's like, yeah, I'm fucking down. Mm. We get these people as sponsors, this, that. And we did it at Ikat Privé, which is normally only open Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, but they opened it up on a Tuesday for us. And we planned in the span of 24 hours, like the most insane shit. We planned like a pre that was like 400 people. Um, we planned this this event on a Tuesday night at Ikat, which was like probably the most profitable night of the entire year. Wow. Um, we planned uh, an after party at Gila Ibarte's house, which we didn't even make it to because we had to keep DJing and the Nelk boys only came into the club for like 10 minutes. Um, but it was fucking crazy, bro. Yeah, so you guys were in the video too. So, so yeah, you, yeah. you, you oh, planned yeah. it we, out. We, you... Well, yeah, we took them out to lunch because okay. uh, they, they were asking us for somewhere to eat. Yeah. And so I called up uh, I called up uh, the owner of Gentile because I know him because I've been going there since I'm a kid. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm like, listen, I'm coming with these guys. Blah, blah, blah. This is the deal. He said, okay, right away we'll make room. We come in. And then when we tried leaving the restaurant, oh, it was yeah. at 2 p.m. There was a like, Three hundred. I saw that. It was like the Beatles. Restaurant, yeah. Trying to rush it. <laughs> How many people? <laughs> like three hundred fifty people. You can see in the video. It's That's fucking. Crazy. Yeah, I saw. It, it, it's like the, if you watch the video, it's like it looks like the Beatles are inside the fucking <laughs> yeah, cafe. It's, there, it's, it's, bro. Like, modern day, world. modern day. Yeah, modern day Beatles. And uh, they're doing like a ruckus there too. They're fucking bro. being loud and shit. What were they doing? They were fucking yelling. There was cops. It was a whole situation. Mm. And we we're just trying to leave. And. Uh, you guys all together were trying to leave, or you and Halal are like trying to dip? Well, the Nelk boys, they had to go All of the, the entourage. The yeah, entourage. no, Halal and I just went through the front and the other. Okay. We're not fucking famous, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, not yet, not yet. <laughs> who knows? Who knows what's going to happen, but... But so how are they, like, in... Per are they... Nice guys, like, what do you guys, I mean, do you guys listen, riff yeah. a little bit? Because I feel like they riff, like, you watch the Trump interview, they riff, you know, they know how to be, like, you know, 
I like Listen, Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's a smart guy. Yeah. Um, like, he's obviously, like, you know, you could tell, like, when you're sitting down at the table with them that the second they turn on the camera, it's, it's a little bit of energy. There's a difference. There's yeah, a difference. Yeah, there's a difference. Like, yeah. I can't say I'm entirely that surprised. Like, you know, I, I saw that show when I was in LA with other creators and stuff like that. Like, it's not, it's not really a shocker, but they're like, conserving their energy for the, yeah, the show. Yeah. And like, they don't drink as much off camera and stuff yeah. like that. At least not Kyle. Like he was like the head of the shit. Like he has to keep his head on tight. The yeah. other guys are not as sharp, I'd say. So they're drinking more and stuff like He's that. He's just kind of like the cult leader a little bit. Low key Kyle, yeah. if you're watching it, you're, you're kind of a cult leader, but we love you. That's okay. No, but it is a cult and, a, and that's a great thing. You know? Yeah. I think, sure. I think that's a fantastic thing. He has this hyper dedicated fan base, and it's like no matter what they do, they can't get canceled because sure. their fans don't give a fuck. Like, and and that's great. they also don't give a fuck. That's no, the thing. you only get canceled if you care. No, that's they, the they thing. don't give a fuck. Yeah, and uh, pe most people like the energy they bring. It's like it's positive most most often. Most times it's a positive energy, but it's also like. Uh, I don't know. You feel like you want to be there, and you want to really be a part of. Yeah, the yeah, video. for sure. That's why people watch the videos. Well, yeah, like, like what is what is all these famous creators on YouTube and all these groups? These David Dobricks and Logan Pauls and Mr. why do people Beast. give a yeah? Why do people give a fuck? It's because they want to emulate their lifestyle. It's like they want to be a part. Everyone wants to be in the Dub Boys, or at least like their main viewers, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's how it all goes down, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, enough about the Nelk boys. We, they, they're cool guys. But so you like going back to the businesses that you you did early on. So you you denied a position at the national bank. Yeah. You decided that okay, this isn't for me. I want to do something I want to do. Was it at that moment that you said we're gonna do a brand? Because you've always been no. into clothes. No, that happened later on. Um, in that moment, I decided like I'm gonna try to plan something else. So that summer, I ended up going to Israel. And like working for a uh, cryptocurrency startup, like slash video game startup. Mm. This was back in 2016, 2017. Really? So yeah. So it was right when crypto, like the first wave of crypto happened. 2016. How old were you then? I was, uh, I don't know, 23 now. So do the math. Okay. But uh, You're the finance guy. Okay. I'm the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I have a finance degree, but it's, it's not where my life took me. I'll tell you okay. that. Okay. Okay. But um, yeah. Um. That was a crazy time, man, that first fucking crypto wave. Because I remember I was super into crypto at the time. I never mm -hmm. got into crypto during this whole second wave when it's really blown up in the last three years. Yeah. It was a lot of fucking fun, man. I just, like, made a shitload of money and then lost it all in one day. Oh, and I, just, yeah. I broke even in the end. I literally broke flat even. Mm. And I was like, well, fuck this. I'm never touching this shit again. <laughs> and here we are three years later, and it's worth a whole lot more than it was back then. But, no, I, I appreciate crypto. But, yeah, man, I... I uh, the moment I just, the moment when all of that shit happened, I took a different path, a different path was actually a little bit earlier than that. Mm. It happened in Seja when I started uh, my first brand. It was called Scavenge, and it was like this uh, online platform to proxy anything that you wanted in streetwear. So, like, if you were looking for a specific, like, I don't know, like, if your viewers know, like, Supreme and like Palace and like all these sought after brands, you could basically go on my platform. And you could search like, okay, I want like this Supreme t-shirt in a size medium. Um, it needs to be in these conditions. And then I'd have my team of scavengers, is what I call them, go and look for that item. And then we notify you when it's found. And oh, like, wow. Yeah. So that was like, that was like a little startup we had going. I did that with my buddy Felix, who was, who's, who was and still is a very talented software engineer. So he built the entire website. I did everything else. And uh, that was a fully custom platform. And then when one off came along, we converted the whole website into the first web page of one off, which worked like fucking dog shit because it was all built off of custom code. Mm -hmm. And Felix is a fucking beast for this. The fact yeah, because he was even able to do that was insane. When you go on your website, it feels like a different website. You can tell it's not built on one of those Wix websites or. Oh no whatever, no you know? no! Now the new iteration of the one off website. So. But I mean, it's like you could tell it's built from a different system. It's not yeah, with yeah, this yeah. like little play doh so, or they give you. Yeah, so it's the, not pre built. The, the new website is uh is an entirely different thing that that is like a russian software i found mm. and like during the first like uh, hello found it eh no 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 I he does the russian hacking and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no this i found uh we both found by speaking to some guys who yeah, were yeah. like a web development uh anyways i was getting a little bit into web dev uh like two years ago and uh 
I had my exchange starting in April. So during the months of January and February, I basically just like went on YouTube. I was very interested by front end web development. So I started picking up a little bit of code and then I used that plus the Russian software to basically build the current one-off platform, so. And you went to Japan, right, for your exchange? Bro, I went to Asia, I backpacked through Asia uh, for a month, and I ended up in Japan at the end of the month, like at the beginning of, uh, end of March, beginning of April, and six days in, fucking COVID hit, I was oh, literally fuck. caught the yeah. last flight out of the country to come back to Montreal. It's like Rossi. Yeah, well, yeah. Rossi, Rossi, the thing is, his exchange started in January, mine was starting in April, so he had the first three months, I mean, he still got fucked, I feel terrible. Yeah, yeah. He had the first three months, you know, I had fuck all. So I was very pissed and like Japan was like the fucking dream. It was like the thing I was looking forward to like my whole life. But you had one off before that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had one off going So right let's before. let's get into one off and like how it's just, you know, how, yeah, how, you how, how did one off start, like, bro? Yeah, the hype, everything. Let's see. Okay, so, so the way one off started was it wasn't one off at first. It was a brand called Global Oval, which is like, I don't know if your camera's going to pick this up, but it was, it's this logo on my phone. We'll zoom in on it. We'll yeah, 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 sure. Show. You can sit. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. So uh, basically, um, in 2018, 2019, there was that egg on Instagram. I got like 50 million likes. You know that picture of like that little brown egg? I don't know if you remember that. No. Okay, it's, it's the most liked picture on Instagram. It's an egg. It's a fucking egg. Like, okay. it's literally a picture of a, like, egg. What's so special about different... the egg? Nothing. Okay. That, that was the whole gimmick. Right. It was like... <laughs> Let's see if this egg could beat the like rep. Like Kylie Jenner at the time had the most likes oh, on a picture. Okay. Like her and her fucking baby. It's like a meme. It's like let's fucking. Yes, yeah, so let's see if we can beat that record. Okay. So that picture ended up beating the record and getting the most likes on all of Instagram. Wow. Like over 50 million. Still, still to this day? Yeah, still to this day. I, I believe still to this day. I mean, okay. you can look it up and fact You are fake news. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, there's so much of it. But yeah. anyways. So, uh, you know, Halal and I are, are, are sitting on the second floor of McGill and Halal just told me, he's like, yeah, I just bought the domain for the eggcompany.com. And we're like, cool. So what the fuck are we doing with all of this? And we're like, well, look, like, you know, there's this egg on Instagram and people are just sitting there and liking it like fucking crazy and nothing's coming out of it. What if every person who was liking it donated 25 cents and all of that money went towards a meaningful cause? So like, fuck, that's interesting. Okay, maybe there's something to be built around this. So... We looked into it and we're like, okay, we're going to make a hoodie that says the egg that beat underscore, kind of like a Mad Libs, where it's like the underscore fill in the blank. And the whole idea was it's left up to interpretation. It could be the egg that beat Kylie, like Kylie's like record. It could be the egg that beat adversity, the egg that beat poverty, something to do with getting back. Do you like draw on it yourself or something? Well, or? you can you can write whatever you want, but it's just the egg that beat underscore. So it's mm -hmm. a fill in the blank. Okay. And we partnered up with these people called Care Packs. And it's essentially like these care packages with like socks, like toothpaste, uh, a bunch of homeless people essentials. And the whole idea was for every hoodie we were going to sell, we were going to give back one of these care packs to the homeless people. Oh, wow. So then we started emailing, cold emailing a bunch of YouTubers. Mr. We ended up getting on a call with Mr. Beast Manager, getting wow. on a call with Logan Paul, which was fucking insane at the time. And this all happened in a three-week time span. It was the craziest three weeks. And this is Halal ever. pulling these contacts again. Well, it was it was both of you, it was the both of us uh, just what you, really going at it. What do you like? You spent hours, eh, on the internet just looking for numbers. Or yeah, and different leads. angles to get in, and and and, and knowing what to say. Hello is very good at knowing what to what to tell these people um, to like raise an eyebrow and get a conversation going. Mm. Um, and so we started speaking to these people, and we're like, listen, this is what we're trying to do. Um, do you want in? And you know, we found out that these philanthropy YouTubers, like Mr. Beast, asked for one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we're like. Bro, we don't have fucking we wow. don't have 150k and we started speaking to other youtubers and one thing led to another and the question that kept coming up was what's your infrastructure and we didn't have an infrastructure so we're like fuck so we kind of abandoned the project and then a few months later there was fire festival and in fire festival there was this jew in the documentary who spoke hebrew so uh halal speaks hebrew he dm'd him on instagram and he's like oh ta -ta -ta. they started speaking about the girl uh, the village girl who had like fed all of the uh, all of the people and who got fucked out of like fifty. Yeah, years. yeah. Just for the view, the fire festival was basically this festival. You guys probably heard it. It happened a couple of years ago, where everyone got fucked out of the money because a lot of promises were made that it was going to be the best festival on an island. It wasn't an island, yeah, yeah, and it just it was, just, it was a complete yeah total disaster. That's what it was. Huge scam. Yeah. So he started going back and forth with this guy, and he's like, "Listen." Uh, you know, once again, as an initiative, we wanted to use Fire Festival and like make t-shirts that for every t-shirt we sell, we would take the proceeds and donate them to this woman who, who had lost out on all of this, uh, 
all this money she Oh, had. yeah, the, 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 the island lady, right? Exactly. Yes, 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 I, I recognize her, yeah. And we started speaking to this guy, and he's telling us, okay, that's interesting, what's your infrastructure? And we're like, fuck, we don't have an infrastructure. And so we had started this brand called Global Oval that was meant to be the whole infrastructure behind giving back. And we noticed that first we tried to give back on the egg, then the fire festival. So what they had in common is these were these pop culture events that were happening and we wanted to give back in a cool way. And we always wanted to get the youth involved in giving back. We realized the gap in the system was like, you know, you give a kid 50 bucks nowadays and you tell him to go donate it to a cause. He doesn't know where the fuck to look because he doesn't care. Mm. Giving back isn't cool. Right Are we now. scared they're going to take his money and spend it on something no, else? No, but, even, yeah, but <laughs> even if you told them, look, you have to donate. Like, yeah, yeah. If you watch everything they did, they wouldn't know where to go. It's true. Because giving back just isn't cool right now. It's yeah. not cool at all. And so we started this brand and the whole goal of it was to make giving back cool among the youth. And so we tried to do this and then we realized like, fuck, it's very hard to do this and make money. So we started this spin-off brand called One Off mm. that was supposed to take these events in pop culture. And then for every product we sell, we give back a little bit, but it was supposed to fund the global oval. That was the whole idea. So then we went with our first drop with One Off. We did something around the whole cyber truck when Elon Musk threw the rock at the yes. window and it shot. He's repped in the shirt right there, yeah, the yeah, cyber yeah, truck. Yeah. It's a beautiful shirt. I love it. Thank it's, you. And it still hasn't came out, the fucking cyber truck. But yeah, it's still crazy. 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 crazy, crazy. That's your first That's drop. Time. This is our first drop. Yeah. And we took some of the money and donated it to the Welcome Home Mission and uh that started like a whole snowball effect and then one off just became the main project and global mm -hmm. was kind of left behind and now it's on the back burner we have some plans for it when one off goes big but hopefully but uh yeah that's that's basically how one off was born and and you continued it with the election campaign yeah, yeah we did something for the 2020 elections there yeah. with trump versus biden and we staged it as like a ufc match because yeah. it was like they were basically boxing each other that's the one where i did the little uh, impersonation after that you guys did the college drop right yeah the Zoom. digital diploma yeah, digital so it was all about one. online school yeah so always something that's relevant to the time and then uh after that we did uh, covid ruined spring break we did the hat then we did an nft project uh, with Mark Cuban. NFTs, NFTs. Let's get into that because you. Oh fuck. <laughs> you. So I, okay, if I remember correctly, you guys did the Angry a Anklers. Yeah, what was it called? Angry yeah, Ankl yeah. Anklers. Okay. Yeah. And so, because um, that's one thing most people are confused about. They don't know what the hell yeah, it is. Yeah. We're not gonna say what are NFTs because fucking everyone asks what are NFTs. Well, but that was the whole What made thing. you guys want to get into that? Like, what well, was? Well, so the whole the whole drop we did around that was we made a poster. That was explaining what NFTs were. And yes. We used the NFT we made as the example in the poster. That, okay. was, that was the whole drop. Because everyone was so fucking confused about NFTs. This was back in October. Everyone was so confused about NFTs. And we're like, okay, well, this is an opportunity to make a poster explaining what NFTs are. And we wanted this, uh, the creative director of Wired Magazine, Alana Lacey, who's super talented. Um, and we're like, okay, we're going to use, uh, uh, we're going to create our, like, we're going to create a poster explaining what NFTs are. But instead of just, you know, using any old other NFT, like a board API club or something like that, we're going to create our own so we can really tell the story. Really? And really understand it. Okay. So that's, how, that's why we created the, uh, the Angry Anglers. So we did an entire project around that. And, uh, and then we threw an event for it. And uh, yeah, it was a major learning experience. It was a super hectic few weeks. But it was so really you guys cool. had to like um, hire an artist, make... Uh, like a million different uh, versions of one F NFT. So that's actually, so this is what, like uh, uh, a common misunderstanding, the way NFTs work, like, well, at least like these art style NFTs yes. that are like, sorry, I just need to sneeze. Okay. <laughs> okay, nothing came out. Right. Like, I'm gonna <laughs> come. <laughs> Don't come. I'm gonna come. I'm <laughs> gonna come. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I could last more than a few minutes. Anyways. <laughs> so, uh, the, the common misconception with, with these art style NFTs is that like if there's 10,000 of them there's an artist that sits there and draws 10,000 different NFTs and that's actually not how it works how it works is you draw different attributes so I don't know if it's uh, if it's a bored ape one of the attributes might be earrings so you'll draw 30 or 40 different styles of earrings and then what you'll do is if it's like a Cartesian plane it's a square the coordinates of the earrings are always going to be mm. the same so when it's randomly generated in this thing called a candy machine it essentially says, okay, I'm going to pick one of these 40 earrings based off of rarity, and then it's going to put those earrings in that geographic location on the picture. So that's actually how it's done. So an artist is sitting there and drawing 30 or 40 earrings, maybe 30 or 40 eyes, whatever it is, 
And then once all those assets are mocked up, it's put into a random generator and it can generate a million different wow. pictures. That's really how it works, yeah. So it, that probably takes like two weeks for an artist to do, or three weeks or so. It depends on the artist, man. Our, our artist uh, worked pretty fast. Yeah? He turned it around in one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. He made all those different attributes. For a couple of days, really, but yeah. Okay, well, he must have been on some drugs, hey? Like uh, some, some, uh, color, I don't, I don't some know. Some value there. <laughs> 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 some value. He does a lot of projects. So, so you guys, you made this thing. Um, it went on the NFT Instagram. With is that Mark Cuban? Where Mark Cuban comes in? Yeah. So Cuban owns uh, an NFT. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, we he he took on our project and. Uh, so you spoke to Mark Cuban? No, not directly. No. Okay. Because he was handling millions of projects, um, but he endorsed our project, so that was cool. Okay. So he he said your your project's name and stuff. So. I want to know a little bit more about. He this. never said. Well, sorry, I should clarify. He never said our project's name, but it was posted on his page. It's not it's NFTs. Not, yeah, he owns the page, but he's not the one actively posting it. Mean, okay. He ends up to a lot of shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have fucking time to yeah. <laughs> look at everything. He's he runs like NFT, ten million companies NFT, or something. Two hundred fifty companies. Uh, yeah. yeah. NFT, like we always say, it's no fucking time. That's what it's. No fucking for. time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you did that, and what? How did it work? Were you like, how do you convince people to buy art? that um like what's the value behind buying an nft what was the value behind your nft that made people buy it it's hard man because it was it was the beginning so people were kind of buying it in on the hype and that was like a big learning experience for us and what's the value i mean it's the utility right so like uh give you an example i don't know if your viewers know gary v yes but gary v made an nft called v friends and if you own a V Friends NFT, once a year you get to attend a conference okay. that only V Friends holders can attend, and Gary V's there. So, you know, everyone's trying to be a holder of a V Friends so that they get to speak to and meet Gary V. Mm -hmm. So that's a really interesting, you know, utility. But there's a million different styles of utilities, right? So, so what was the utility for you guys? So we had a few different utilities. One of them was this event we were hosting to basically be able to attend this poster reveal party. Uh, another one was giving access to posters, was sending out posters to certain holders. Um, and it was kind of just buying into the one-off brands and like buying into the long-term vision of one-off. That was really like the utility for us, you know, um, it was tied to the brands. And, uh, so it was like a donation kind of kind of thing plus a party type of thing. Yeah. Not really a donation per se. I mean, uh, we also, we also redistributed, uh, uh, some of the proceeds from the aftermarkets, the holders, the, the, there was a few, there was a few different, uh, okay. utilities. Yeah. But it was, it was a very challenging project because it was, all, it all happened very, very fast. And a lot of it was out of our control. It was the team. We were Are you going to make it a long-term thing? Are you going to give people like more events? If they have an angry ankler thing, will that give them more events in the future later on? Or is it just like no, a one-time thing? I, I think, I think we're figuring that all out right now. Okay. Um, but I, I do definitely foresee NFTs being a part of a one-off brand in a big way. Um, and, you know, tokenizing all of the products we release. So like if I release this fleece, like being able to, when somebody buys the fleece on my website, is also able to get a digital version of the fleece and wear it in, in you know the digital world however that may unfold if it's the metaverse which oh yeah because that, that's the, the next big thing means, your digital real estate oh, yeah. uh yeah. yeah and that's where it cut off guys it was a great conversation it was a great conversation i hope you enjoyed this i just want to thank my sponsor stream studio if you want to start a podcast within 30 seconds go on to streamstudio.com put in your email you get a code within 20 seconds on your email and then you just enter that code and bada bing bada boom you can start a podcast it's as easy as that thank you so much for tuning in this week cheyenne show the cheyenne show